Okay, welcome to another simple engineering snippet. In this instructional video, we will be taming an analytical solution for steady laminar flow between infinite plates. This is often referred to as a Poiseuille flow, although the classical Hagen Poiseuille flow is a steady laminar flow uh, through a circular cylinder. Hope you find it useful. All right, let's get started. First, let's note that our coordinate axis, x, y, and z directions, and y is equal to zero is at the uh, midpoint between uh, the two plates. Uh, we're going to be using velocity, and the velocity vector is a standard velocity vector in Cartesian coordinates with u, v, and w being the x, y, and z components of velocity. And our gravity is in the minus y direction. We are going to be attaining a solution where we are going to assume that the uh, pressure gradient in the x direction is less than zero, which is consistent for uh, the uh, x component of velocity u as shown in the positive x direction. Okay, let's review some of the equations. We'll be using the continuity equation already simplified for steady flow. And we will also be uh, utilizing the uh, Navier-Stokes equation, the x-direction component. Uh, Navier-Stokes equation is also uh, is derived from linear momentum. And this is the equation which we hope to simplify and integrate to obtain an analytical solution. All right, so we're going to be doing multiple steps in this problem. Uh, we are going to solve for the uh, velocity distribution. It's going to be the x-component of velocity u will be a function of y. Uh, the volumetric flow rate per unit depth, I have to say per unit depth because these are infinite plates, the direction, the dimension in the z direction is infinity, so we're going to be uh, finding uh, quite a few things based on a per unit depth basis. We're also going to be solving for the hydraulic diameter, the average velocity, and solving for the uh, Moody friction factor as a function of Reynolds number. But what does that mean? Uh, this may make sense to some of you. Uh, for the other Poiseuille flow, for steady laminar flow in a circular cylinder, we can obtain analytically that the friction factor is equal to 64, the Reynolds number. We're going to get a different uh, uh, result in this, but this is what I mean uh, by solving for the uh, friction factor as a function of Reynolds number. That doesn't mean anything to you. Uh, we will go through it in detail. Okay, so what's given is that there is no velocity in the y and z direction. That saves us from uh, going through and simplifying the uh, y direction and the z direction of your Stokes equations, steady laminar flow, stationary plates, and just as a review, uh, when we have stationary boundaries, that no set boundary conditions are going to apply, and so uh, the velocity at y is equal to plus h and y is equal to minus h y is going to be equal to zero. And let's think a little bit about the uh, the uh, what the uh, solution should look like. Well, with a negative pressure gradient in the x direction, again, we would expect that when we put that in uh, with a negative value, we will return a positive uh, value for the x component of velocity. For horizontal plates, the uh, flow is going to go from high pressure to low pressure. And since we already mentioned that the no step boundary condition is going to apply, we know the velocity not zero everywhere, but it is at the edges. So I would expect the maximum velocity to occur at y is equal to zero. Uh, going along with that, I would expect that the, uh, the gradient du dy at y is equal to zero to be zero. All right, let's go through dimensions. I've already mentioned this, that the uh, y is equal to zero is at the center line, and the distance to the upper plate is h, and the distance to the lower plate is h. So let's jump into the continuity equation to start uh, simplifying that. And we are given that there is no velocity in the y or z direction, so these two derivatives are going to be zero. And that leaves us with the, uh, the gradient of u with respect to x is equal to zero, or in other words, fully developed flow. Okay, let's go and jump into the x component of the Navier-Stokes equation. Again, it's going to be key that we have a, a no velocity in the y or z direction and also it's fully developed flow. So this is the equation, uh, actually pretty hard to, uh, to integrate. And really key to this, anytime we want to find a, uh, an analytical solution, all the terms on the left-hand side we need to make go away. Well, we're given that a steady flow, so this, the uh, local derivative term, time derivative term goes away. Uh, from continuity, 
Oh, we will provide that there is no velocity in the uh, y direction and the z direction, so those terms go away. And there is no body force in the x direction. And there is no component of velocity in the z direction. Things are not changing in the z direction, so that term is zero. Uh, we already know that du dx is equal to zero, and so the second derivative is also equal to zero. And so in the end, we obtained uh, this equation, which also uh, looks like a partial differential equation, but remember the pressure gradient is provided. And so in reality, we can write this as an ordinary differential equation as so. The right-hand side is in fact a constant. And so let's integrate that twice. Uh, after the first integration, we introduce the integration constant C1. Based on our arguments of uh, the uh, velocity being a maximum at the center line and the derivative is equal to zero and y is equal to zero, I expect that C1 is going to be equal to zero, but let's just go ahead and carry it along in the integration. And so we'll integrate that again, and we obtain this equation with two integration constants. So we have two integration constants, and we're going to need two boundary conditions again. Notice that boundary conditions are going to provide us the two boundary conditions. And so at y is equal to plus h, we will substitute that into our uh, integrated equation. As such, that's one equation. And we'll call that equation alpha. And then we'll do the same thing for y is equal to minus h. Taking care of how we handle the negative sign, that's going to be important. And we will call that equation bravo. So we have two equations, two unknowns, so we're going to find some combinations to solve for the integration constant C1 and C2. Uh, so first I'm going to subtract equation Bravo from equation alpha. And I'm going to skip the algebra, but I'm going to be left with uh, two times uh, C1 is equal to zero or C1 is equal to zero, which is what we expected based upon our arguments for maximum velocity being at the center line. Next we're going to add equations to alpha plus Bravo. And again, I'm going to skip the algebra, but uh, we are left with a constant for C2. So now we can plug that back into our equation, along with C1 is equal to 0. Do a little bit of algebra and simplification, and this is our answer. All right, well, that's good. So we found the velocity distribution, but we should do some spot checks. And let's confirm that uh, our boundary conditions are satisfied. So we expect this equation to return 0 at plus H and minus H. And if you look at that, the quantity in the uh, parentheses, y squared minus h squared, uh, goes away for both of those values. So, in fact, it does satisfy uh, the boundary conditions. Again, let's go back and do an extra check. And do we get the maximum velocity at y is equal to 0? Well, in the parentheses, the maximum y can ever be is h. And so, uh, this, and this is minus h squared. So, the maximum value in the parentheses is always going to be when y is equal to zero. So that is going to be that. There are some uh, arguments on the uh, derivative that we uh, sort of alluded to before. Uh, but in the end, we can solve for uh, the maximum velocity, which is going to occur at u is equal to zero, and it's just equal to this uh, constant. Again, there's a negative sign here. Uh, that has nothing to do with the fact that we are saying our pressure gradient is less than equal to zero, because I put in a Pressure gradient less than or equal to zero. Negative times a negative gives a positive velocity in the, in the plus x direction as we expected. All right, well, now let's work on the uh, volume flow rate uh, per unit depth. Again, we have to go per unit depth because the uh, distance in the uh, z direction uh, is infinity. So the answer there would be infinite flow rate. So to do that, uh, to find uh, the volume flow, we typically integrate the uh, velocity over the area. And that's what we're doing, but it's per unit depth. So uh, the differential area is just equal to 1 times dy. So we're going to integrate from minus h to plus h. And so we substitute in our equation for uh, the x component of velocity, carry out the uh, integration, and do some algebra simplification. And we come up uh, with this answer. That's a perfectly good answer, but we're going to improve upon that here in a little bit. But uh, let's set that aside because we're going to use it again later. All right, now let's work on the hydraulic diameter. Now, hydraulic diameter has a, uh, a definition, and it is four times the flow area divided by the wetted perimeter. Now, coming up with that from this geometry is uh, a little bit tricky, but uh, let's step back a little bit to look at another rectangular geometry. A rectangle of height A and width bravo 
flow is going into this rectangular, call it a duct. Let's calculate the hydraulic diameter for this geometry. Uh, clearly the flow rate is alpha times bravo. And the weight perimeter is 2 times the sum of alpha and bravo. So here's the equation, plugging these values into the, uh, the definition of hydraulic diameter. And we're left with this expression. Well, that's good. And actually, we can use that for uh, our geometry. Note that alpha, the height, in our example, is 2 times h. And bravo is going to infinity. Now, we can actually use some clever algebraic trips, uh, tricks and uh, do this a little bit more formally, but I prefer to kind of do the engineering shortcut, and I say, well, in the denominator, I have infinity plus a finite number. That is still infinity. In the numerator, it's multiplied, so I've got to be a little bit more careful because certainly zero times infinity means we have to go to L'Hopital's rule, but in the end, I'm just going to carry along the numerator and simplify the denominator so I get... 2 times alpha times bravo divided by bravo. Bravos cancel out. So the hydraulic diameter of this rectangle rectangle, is 2 times alpha. And for our case, alpha is 2 times h. So our hydraulic diameter is 4 times h. Okay, so this is actually true for a rectangle where the width is much, much greater than the height. All right, now let's go to average velocity. And the definition of average velocity is the flow divided by the flow area. And again, we're going to have to be working in terms of per unit depth. Per unit depth, the flow area is 2 times h times 1. And, well, we already have the flow per unit depth. So let's plug that in. But before we do that, let's get rid of this uh, partial derivative of pressure with respect to x. Now, this is a mathematical definition, but let's change that and to pressure drop per unit length. So we get rid of the partial derivative and we lose a negative sign because the pressure drop is different than uh, the derivative dpdx. Okay, so this is a pretty common approach. So think about that, and uh, this will serve you for other types of these analytical solutions. So we're going to plug that into our equation for volume flow, and this is really the best equation for volume flow uh, that, that we can have. Again, pressure drop per unit length has, been, has replaced the minus uh, pressure gradient with, in, with respect to the x direction. Okay, now that we have that, we can uh, solve for our volumetric flow rate by the flow in the numerator divided by our flow area in the denominator, and we obtain this value for the average flow rate. A little bit of a sidebar in that, once again, we can go back to our maximum velocity current at, equal to, at, at u is equal to, at y is equal to zero. And let's get rid of, get rid of that uh, pressure gradient to the negative sign again. And so we get this expression for maximum velocity. In these type of problems, it's usually of interest to find what is the uh, maximum velocity uh, ratio to the average velocity. So let's take the ratio of these two equations. It comes out to be a nice clean three halves. Now some of you will recall that when we have a circular cylinder, laminar, steady laminar flow in a circular cylinder, uh, we can analytically obtain a similar expression where the maximum velocity divided by the average velocity is equal to two. So this is a different problem, but this is a similar result. All right, well, now let's work on finding a fr the Moody friction factor as a function of Reynolds number. Okay, so let's review. This is our Reynolds number, the density times the average velocity times hydraulic diameter divided by the absolute viscosity. And again, let's not lose touch the fact that our hydraulic diameter is equal to 4 times h. And we have an equation for our average velocity. So there's a couple different ways to get there, but uh, what I like to do is uh, solve this equation for the average velocity for a pressure drop. And here it is, and this isn't too revealing, but we're starting to sort of look like some things in there are starting to look like a Reynolds number, so that's good. So let's go with that and call that equation Charlie. Now let's write down the Darcy Weisbach equation where pressure drop is equal to the friction factor times the length over hydraulic diameter times the density v squared over 2. 
Let's plug in our value for hydraulic diameter, and we get 4H in the denominator, and let's call this equation delta. Now, both equation Charlie and delta are for pressure drop. And, oh, before I go on, I should note that the uh, velocities of Darcy Weisbach equation are not often written as average velocities, uh, but they are, in fact, the average velocity squared. So I am going to equate uh, equation Charlie and delta. And let's start at that point. And let's clean this up a little bit. So we can cancel out the length. Some of the uh, heights will go away, h's go away. And some of the average velocities can be simplified. So now we can solve this simplified equation for the friction factor. And we get 24 times the viscosity over rho of the average velocity times h. Well, that's this term is looking a lot like a Reynolds number. And look, actually, it's looking very close to 1 over the Reynolds number. And review what the 1 over Reynolds number is, is viscosity divided by density, average velocity, and hydraulic diameter. And our hydraulic diameter is 4h. And so I would like the uh, term on the right side of my friction factor equation to be 1 over the Reynolds number, because that's what we're looking for. And to make that happen, I'm going to take this ratio, uh, this equation, multiply it by 4 over 4, which is just 1, so I'm not going to change anything. And so when I do that, I get 4h in the denominator, and that is our hydraulic diameter, and 24 times 4 is 96, and so our answer is 96 over the Reynolds number. And this is true for rectangular geometry. Uh, when the uh, width is much, much greater uh, than the height. We get the friction factor is equal to 96 over the Reynolds number. Now, just recall that, in, again, we covered this previously, for a circular pipe, it's 64 over the Reynolds number, and that this, this formula is actually plotted on the Moody diagram. And uh, you have to be careful because some people will have a rectangular geometry and will grab this value for friction factor off the Moody diagram that is only valid for circular pipe. I think I'll do an instructional video on how to handle hydraulic uh, diameter for laminar flow versus turbulent flow. Uh, that'll be a good uh, instructional snippet. All right, well, uh, what have we done? Well, we've completed the problem. We've solved for the velocity distribution. And let's uh, go through our results. And that wraps up the problem. So I hope you found this uh, useful. Uh, so please like and subscribe. Have a great day.